explain why the title of your book includes the phrase, the corruption of science? And in what way has science been corrupted? So what we've seen uh, recently uh, is, is really evidence of, I mean, there's nothing really else you can call it, the corruption of science. In my book, I focus on Monsanto, a big agrochemical company, uh, and a lot of documents that have come out through litigation recently and, and documents that you see in freedom of information requests show very clearly that, that this company has spent decades, literally decades, manipulating the scientific literature published peer-reviewed journals that are supposed to be sort of a bedrock of what we understand to be authentic science. And, and we see Monsanto talking internally about ghostwriting papers, um, trying to pay people whose names will appear on these papers, but really Monsanto is the one doing the writing and doing the manipulating. And we have multiple examples uh, of this corruption of the scientific literature. But, but you also have situations, uh, other examples, where Monsanto or Bayer or, or DuPont or other companies are funneling money to academics uh, who are putting forth scientific findings or trying to weigh in on scientific policy. And again, they, they look like they're doing this independently, but in fact they're being directed uh, oftentimes by the corporations. Um, you know, corporations, uh, are realize that, that science uh, you know, is what we trust, it's what we rely on. And so if they can own it and they can control it and they can drive it, you know, it's, it's very powerful and important for them. And that's what we see that they're doing. What has the science shown to be the health consequences of glyphosate? There's a lot of science out there on glyphosate. Glyphosate is the main ingredient in Roundup, Monsanto's herbicides, and, and hundreds of other herbicide products sold around the world. Uh, glyphosate by itself, there's a, quite a body of literature on that, but glyphosate in formulation, in formulated products that people actually buy and use um, is something different, and that, in fact, is found to be much more toxic than glyphosate by itself. Uh, when you combine it with surfactants and other chemicals, in Roundup or in other products. So there's a host of epidemiology studies, toxicology studies, mechanistic data, uh, and the, the weight of evidence, according to our international cancer experts, uh, tell us that this is a probable human carcinogen. Uh, glyphosate has also been found uh, to be connected to reproductive problems, uh, problematic uh, birth outcomes for people, um, there, there's a range of, of science that shows uh, liver and kidney ailments uh, in animals that are treated or dosed with glyphosate. Uh, there's some evidence that it might be uh, tied to acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, that was a recent government study that came out that showed that association. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things to be concerned about uh, with glyphosate. And of course, this is the most widely used herbicide in the world. Why has the biotech and pesticide industry been able to do things that are good for them, even if it causes harm to people's health or the planet's? Why are there no regulations to safeguard against products that are unsafe? Well, there are a lot of regulations um, that, that are designed to guard against products that are unsafe. Uh, unfortunately, what you see is that a lot of times our, our regulators don't follow those, those rules, and in fact, they waive those rules or they waive those provisions. Uh, for instance, there is a provision in the law that requires regulators, requires the EPA to take into account uh, the fact that children consume foods that carry pesticide residues. And the government is supposed to consider a 10-time safety margin, uh, a tenfold extra margin of safety when they allow pesticide residues into foods. And, and the different levels that they allow. And they've decided, for instance, that with glyphosate and other you know, very commonly used chemicals, very profitable chemicals for corporations, they've decided they don't need to do that. They've decided they're just gonna waive that requirement in the law, uh, and, and they do that. So uh, you know, there's, there's a host of other things that we've seen. They've been sued multiple times for failing to follow the law. The USDA has been sued for failing to follow the law and approving different genetically engineered crops, um, and, and they've lost, you know, every time. Um, but they just go back and, you know, do the paperwork and find another loophole and, uh, you know, again, 
corporations are, are the top interest of our regulators and lawmakers, not just our, the regular mom and dad out on the street. You said that Monsanto and glyphosate pushed for pesticide dependence in our world, and we are now awash in pesticides with glyphosate being perhaps the most worrisome. Can you explain that any further? Sure. So when Monsanto introduced genetically engineered crops in the 1990s, uh, the, the main purpose uh, was to sell more glyphosate. Uh, the crops that they introduced and that they rolled out were herbicide-tolerant, glyphosate-tolerant crops. They were called Roundup-ready crops. And Monsanto did this because the patent was expiring on glyphosate and it wanted to continue to hold market share and uh, to drive profits and volume. And it worked like a charm, worked great. Uh, you know, seed sales exploded and so did the use of Roundup and other glyphosate herbicides. Uh, so we're now, you know, at a point where we have glyphosate in air, in water, in our soil, uh, you know, in our food, uh, and in our own bodies, found very commonly in, in urine. It's, as we've said, it's the most widely used herbicide uh, in the world. And what's been happening, in addition to the rise of, of human health concerns, is we've had a whole host of environmental concerns um, come about, primarily weed resistance. It doesn't work like it used to. We've used this weed killer so extensively for so long, the weeds aren't dying anymore. So the corporate answer to this has been more pesticides. Uh, instead of trying to come up with a more sustainable solution, the solution that they have put forward is to combine dicamba or True4D or other herbicides with glyphosate and just pour more of it on these crops. Uh, you know, so that's what we're doing. And, and we've already seen, with that change, new environmental problems arise. Uh, so it's just a vicious, vicious cycle, a pesticide treadmill uh, that we need to get off of. You said that about 300 million pounds of glyphosate are sprayed each year, even on crops that are not GMO crops, and that glyphosate residue is being found in food. Why is this a concern for the public? Well, it's a concern for the public if you believe, like many scientists do around the world, that glyphosate uh, consumption and glyphosate exposure is harmful to your health. Uh, you know, we know it's harmful to the environment. We have a lot of evidence of, of what it's doing to soil health as well as you know biodiversity and, and pollinator health and uh, you know the, the degradation of, of the soil is a big problem because of course we rely on soil health to grow more food um, but even if you don't care about any of that uh, you know if you if you care about the quality of the food that you're feeding your children you probably care if there's weed killer in it and you know that's something that our government has not been very transparent about. Uh, the FDA and the USD every, every year, these two agencies are supposed to test food for pesticide residues to make sure that they're at levels that are supposedly considered to be safe. Uh, they haven't been doing that for glyphosate. Uh, Monsanto didn't want them to do it, and they haven't been doing it. Uh, you know, for decades and decades. So we truthfully don't have a record uh, or any established government data about how high uh, the levels of this weed killer are in our food. We just, we just don't know. We know it's in there, but we don't know how high. What's the difference between Roundup and glyphosate in terms of health impact on us according to the studies done on them? The studies um, consistently show that formulated products with glyphosate as an active ingredient, but then with added surfactants uh, and other ingredients, that those formulations are more toxic than glyphosate is by itself. Our National Toxicology Program only in 2016 started to, for the first ever time, to do the testing on formulated products. And their early tests confirm what scientists uh, around the world have been saying, that yeah, these formulations are more toxic uh, than glyphosate by itself. Uh, a lot of the reason for that seems to be the surfactants. We even have some internal Monsanto documents where they talk about that as well, uh, that they know that these surfactants you know, can, can have a toxicity problem. Uh, one of the main surfactants that Monsanto was using for decades and decades in its Roundup and other formulations was something called POEA. It has a much longer name, but uh, we like to just call it POEA, uh, and that's POEA has been banned in Europe now because uh, it's so dangerous and found to be so toxic. Um, and that's what people have been exposed to for, for so long. Uh, 
uh, in Roundup products.